Hello, my beautiful and wonderful people on the World Wide Web. My name is David Ruther, and I am here, and I am excited, and I am happy and blessed, and, and it is my honor and privilege to be answering or try to answer all of your questions or some of your questions that you may have about the voice and how it works and how you can become a better and knowledgeable singer or speaker for yourself. Okay, a few disclaimers. First off, I am wearing makeup. Hope it looks good, but uh, I didn't want my face to shine as bright as the uh, ring light I have right here. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Dr. Anna Miller in Fallbrook for giving me this sweatshirt. Super comfy sweatshirt, and it says perfectly imperfect. Now, that's what I like to say to all of my singers who come in and think that singing has to be perfect. Oh, no, it doesn't, because every voice is so unique, and every voice is perfectly imperfect. So you can take that little bit of knowledge, and you can use it for yourself, okay? But thank you, Dr. Anna Miller. Super comfy sweatshirt. Love it. Uh, another disclaimer that I have today is these are not my opinions, these are the facts. Today, I am going to be telling you about a still vocal training or EVT before I uh, described speech level singing and hopefully uh, you got something out of that and you were able to take little nuggets out of that and use them for your voice. Same with this. Now, again, my disclaimer is, is that I do not subscribe or unsubscribe to this. I'm just simply giving you the facts. The only real opinion that I have about it. It is not criticizing it at all, but the only opinion I have about it, uh, because I don't want to start judging it or, or saying this is going to work or this isn't going to work for you, is that it is incredibly complex. It is incredibly detailed and it uses a lot of big words for a lot of knowledge that goes into it. So if you are just starting off for a beginner, I say don't use this. Don't use this at all. Okay, try to stay away from this and just do simple stuff to get that voice going the way that it should. Other than that, here we go with a still vocal training. Now, let's do this. So, Joe Still was a professional singer and researcher back in the 60s and 70s. And at the end of the 70s, in 1979, she started researching the voice. They said she was very good at it. She would take endoscopes and she would go in and she would really look at how the voice as a mechanism and as a part of your anatomy, how it actually works. And she applied science to it, which at that point, no one was really doing that. Everybody was kind of just going off of head voice, chest voice, mixed voice, breathe from your diaphragm, sing from your diaphragm, all of that kind of stuff. So she wanted to change that. And she really wanted to give speech its just due in the science world as well. So speech and singing, and you can always extend that as well. So what she did is she started studying, and in 1988, she came up with a still vocal training, or EVT. It is still exists to this day, even though she has passed on. There are videos of her speaking. There are papers that you can read uh, that are very good. I re highly recommend that. But she also left her training courses, and a lot of people are now training with it. They, all over the world, they are using it to speak better, sing better, all of those things, to give the voice quality that maybe it didn't have before or maybe uh, they are looking for as a professional singer. Now, as I said before, this is kind of complex. So I'm going to break it down into uh, qualities that she has and then vocal qualities, but first I'm going to go off of uh, what she actually starts off first are figures for voice. Now, I'm going to be looking down on my computer. Don't take that as an insult. I'm going to be looking right back at you, and I'm going to be like, we got each other, right? We are here. We got each other. But I'm going to be looking at my computer. I'm going to read for a little bit, and I'm going to come back to you. Hopefully, you enjoyed that side, okay? It's not my best side, but that's okay. So, figures for voice. This is what they say, okay, for, uh, for a still vocal training, EVT. So, she has figures for voice. There are 13 of them. Right? So these are like vocal exercises in which you will do. I'm not going to go over all of the vocal exercises, but this is what you're going to train. True vocal folds, onset, offset control. False vocal folds control. True vocal folds, body cover control. Thyroid cartilage control. Cricoid cartilage control. Larynx control. Velum control. Tongue control. Era epi uh, epiglottic sphincter control. Jaw control. Lips control. Head and neck control. Torso control. Eye contact. What? Those are terms that I would be using if I was speaking to an ear, nose, and throat doctor or an otolaryngologist. What? Era epiglottic sphincter control? 
Can we just say our swallowing muscle? But again, I'm not judging. Don't judge. Okay, I'm not judging. So, this is very complex for a beginning singer, as you can see. Now, it is incredibly detailed. Props to Joe. Props to her for, for how detailed it is. For a beginning singer, even an intermediate singer, this is going to just confuse you. Okay? Now, before, I have to give... Joe is still props in the fact that she doesn't use terms like head voice, chest voice, mixed voice, sing from your diaphragm. As a matter of fact, she's been highly criticized for it because she did not give enough uh, emphasis on breathing or breath control and all that kind of stuff. But I say props. Bravo. Right? Bravo. Because you went straight to the science. Okay? So now she it broke it down into voice quality. Six voice qualities, which are speech, falsetto, sob, twang, belting, and opera. Okay, now this is for everybody to understand. Speech, obviously, is the quality termed model speech by voice scientists or chess voice by singers. She doesn't use that. Speech quality includes the thick folds and neutral larynx position. Does that sound familiar? Speech level singing. Falsetto, okay, now we're gonna, I'm gonna look down. In a falsetto, uh, in a still voice terminology, the term falsetto has a meaning distinct from falsetto as male vocal register. That's where we get a little bit muddy, right? Because I know the false vocal cords as being your vestibular folds that sit on either side of your vocal folds. Look that up, okay? Then we have the sob quality. is a dark and uh, a soft and dark sound associated with sobbing or cry as an adult would mourn. Sob quality is produced on a lower larynx and thin vocal fold. Okay? I don't know if I'm doing that right, but there you go. Twang, the key to twang quality is narrowing of the epilarynx via narrowing or constricting of the era epiglottic sphincter. Again, what? Okay, what? I'm sure they have an exercise for this, but just reading that like that, I'm like, okay, sure. Now, I'm sure it is with that quality that she was talking about of ah, 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 and you can actually hear it and feel it. Okay, we call that resonance. Uh, singers call it resonance and they get it out and you're using your nasal resonators or you're using uh, your your mouth on the roof of your mouth to, to resonate that sound. Okay, again, here we go. Uh, opera, opera quality is a, com a complex. Mind you, all of these have been saying it's a complex setup including a mix of speech quality and twang quality with a tilted thyroid cartilage lower larynx. What? What? Now, we all know as opera as being like, ah, so it has that speech quality to it and also an open. Right? We know that. Okay? So, again, okay. Belting. Belting or belt quality is a complex setup combining speech quality, twang quality, and a tilted cricoid cart cartilage and raised larynx. Twang is an important component in belt quality, meaning it is almost like they say shouting, shouting out, using a powerful voice as you are speaking, and then you are not going to tire it out like you would if you are really shouting, okay? So those are the six voice qualities. Boo! Okay? That's a lot. Now, one of the things that Seth Riggs says is he says you don't need to be thinking about 29 things when you open up your mouth to sing. And I would say the exact opposite of a still, that you need to be thinking about 29 things in order to open up your mouth and sing. So unless you are ready to get into it and dive solely into the science of it, then you know what? As a basic singer, I wouldn't say that. And then they say that then they have like certifications that you can go in, into and it can be used in pop singing. It can be used in country singing and acting and musical theater. It can be used in all of those things. But is it for everybody? Absolutely not. Is speech level singing for everybody? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. None of these are. I'm just giving you what you could do with a still vocal training or EVT. So incredibly complex, very detailed very in-depth and knowledgeable. Is it always applicable? I don't know.
I'm going to try it out. I'm going to, I'm, for you, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to do some of these things like the sob quality. I can come up with my own exercises. I don't need to go to a course or anything like that, but I can come up with my own exercises to kind of do that, to kind of figure out where it, uh, where these sit. Now, I do subscribe. Here's the crazy part is I do subscribe. What she is explaining in that sob quality, that sob quality, like that, that is actually engaging your cricothyroid muscles. And basically what that is, that is your head voice. And then they also talk about the arytenoid cartilage and muscles. That is your chest voice. So those are the science behind those. Love it. Love it. How do we engage them? That's a whole other thing. So hopefully you're not as confused as I am, but you probably are. So that's fine. Ask questions and we'll, we'll figure this out together. We'll kind of go into this together. And if anybody does study a still, I would love to talk to you. I would love to hear more from you. I would love to hear how these actually work for you so that we can apply it for everything. Now, as I've said before, I don't believe that one vocal training is going to be the cure-all, be-all, everything for your voice. I believe that you need to study all of them. Absolutely. So that's what I recommend. But if you have studied a still, I would love to talk to you. I would love to have a conversation with you. I don't want to get in an argument with you uh, because that's what most people from these vocal training programs like to do. They like to say that theirs is the best and mine is the best and mine is the only one that works and you should do this and you should do that. So if you come with me at me like that, I'm not going to have a conversation with you because I don't believe that we should argue about this. I believe that we should have discussions about this, that we should discuss this in a very civil, happy, loving manner. We should all be civilized with one another. Can we do that? I know we can, because you're beautiful, wonderful people. All right, so hopefully that just gave you a little bit, a little bit of tidbit into what it is uh, and what the six voice qualities of a still vocal training are. And if you have any questions, please comment below. I love it when you comment. If you want to follow me, uh, please subscribe, or you can follow me on Instagram at the link below. You can follow me on Facebook at the link below, or you can go to my website at the link below. As always, my name is David Ruther, and I am here because I want to help with all of your vocal questions, and I want to be on this journey with you so that we can clear up all of this muddle and fog. All right? You take care, and I will see you soon at the next video.